we're making ginger. <laughs> we're making ginger. We are. We're going to use ginger at some point. But what are we actually making? What's the dish that we're making today? To chicken katsu chicken. with chicken katsu curry sauce. Exactly, chicken katsu, chicken katsu curry sauce, and that chicken katsu for the first time in one of these classes. We've done so many of these classes now since lockdown. But for the first time, we're doing a um, a recipe that is not mine. Um, Actually, it's the second time we've done something that's not ours. Oh, is it? What was the other thing? The cake. That was a BBC Good Food recipe. Well, you're absolutely right, but we played with it, didn't we? We tweaked that. We don't tell Barney, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to tell if we if we tell him we'll have to tell him what we tweaked as well um because we think ours is slightly better we made it a little bit more chocolatey anyway you guys have all had your list of ingredients if anybody needs them again i can copy and paste them and pop them in the chat but we're going to walk you through everything really calmly really slowly no big dramas and just yell help or stop or ask me a question in the chat if there's something that you don't understand or if we've gone too fast, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is get your saucepan. And then you can get your oil. Mm -hmm. okay. Now the first thing you're going to do is carefully measure your oil. If you haven't already measured it out, you're going to need two to three tablespoons. Like I think you need a solid three tablespoons yes, of oil. Oh, they don't need to see my coffee. I'm getting told off. Such an amateur. Sorry, pro. <laughs> I mean, or, or should I say celebrity chef? <laughs> Perfect. There you go. And sure to pour your oil in and then like, oh, we've got the first step. What's the first step? Tell everyone the ingredients. Well, we're going to tell them as we go. That's fine. I think, I think we're okay. So, you're going to sort of mix the oil around so now you can't really see the oil because it's all mixed around. It's all in the bottom of the pan and then what are we going to add next? Oh. The ginger and the onions and the turmeric. The ginger, ginger, onion and garlic. So the first one to go in is going to be the onion. Now there's a little bit of um, a naughty thing that people do when they write recipes, guys, which as you get more experience, you will learn. And that is that often recipes say to put the garlic in first, which is rubbish. They should never ever do that. Garlic is really high in sugars, naturally occurring sugars. And if you fry garlic first, it often catches and burns and caramelizes long before your onions are cooked through. So if you do it at the same time and very gently, that's fine. But if you ever see a recipe that tells you to put the garlic in with the oil first and then put the onion in, ignore it. Always do the onion first, okay? Stop because it's cold now. Oh, it's fine, it doesn't matter. So now you will put... So we've got onion in, no garlic. garlic which is our one clove of garlic. Um, which it looks like a bit much, but trust me, it's just a bowl. Do you know what? It's like people dot. No one's made the same. There's no clove of garlic that's identical to another, which is nice, nice really, isn't it? But it does mean that if you, you know, use your own judgment and a teaspoon, um, Use your own judgment. If you feel that you've got an enormous clove of garlic and you don't really want it super garlicky, then half the garlic, that's fine. Or if you've got a really teeny weeny tiny one, double it up, also fine. Then, so there's your one onion chopped up that's gone in and your clove of garlic that's um, crushed or chopped up, either way is fine, that's gone in. Next up, it's your ginger. Your ginger, which, We've already prepped, but Dot is going to show you a little trick. So for next time, if you didn't already know it, we're going to show you how to peel a, a, a it's called a rhizome um, of, of ginger. So you want to pop that ginger in. And then we're going to get that warming on the stove. You're going to have a low heat, okay? A very, very low heat and grab a wooden spoon and if you've got a grown-up nearby, 
and you, you want to watch Dot peel her ginger while that's warming through, you can ask them to be your sous chef and stir for you, okay? So, you get to speak. Well, we've got to get it on, lady. <laughs> so now we've got all our three things in there, or four rather, because we've got the oil. So you've got your vegetable oil, your onion, your garlic and your ginger, and we're gonna whoop, get that on the heat. <laughs> Very gentle, low heat. What yeah. exactly? They probably want it to turn out exactly like yours. Don't they, they do. So that's why I said that you were concentrating on your ginger. <laughs> it's a your teaspoon and your ginger. Will you show them what you thought your ginger looked like, Dot? Oh, yes. I thought that this looked like a seahorse unicorn goat. Course. Can you see that? Seahorse body. Has anyone else got a piece of ginger that's got multiple? A seahorse body, <laughs> a goat head, and a unicorn horn. <laughs> it really does look a bit like a seahorse, doesn't it? Isn't With that amazing? The many a faces. Mermaid. Or a mermaid. Or or the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. Many things. Yeah. Our ginger is many things. But right now, that's a good couple of centimetres of ginger that Dot is now going to show you how to peel. So, get your teaspoon and your ginger for the third time. <laughs> but you don't need to get it three times because that would just be a waste of time. So, <laughs> what you will do is Scrape your ginger with the teaspoon. It's quite hard, but maybe if you're having trouble, scrape it on the table because yeah. that makes it easier. Yeah, whatever the easiest way is to work. Either you can do it on a chopping board, or if your grown up says it's fine to do it against the surface, go ahead and do it against the surface. If you've got marble surface, don't because ginger is quite acidic and it will um, affect the marble. Oh, goodness, it's making me. My eyes. Is it making your eyes water? Yeah, it can do that. So the reason why we wanted to show you this is because some people peel ginger with a peeler yeah, and it's, good. it's not good because you waste so much. So the peeler takes away the best part of the ginger. So the most tender, juicy part of the ginger is the bit that's closest to this brown, papery outer skin. And if you do it this way, the only thing that comes off is the paper on the outside. And the more wiggly and knobbly your ginger is, the smaller the teaspoon you can use. So um, I use one of my um, aunt gave me a set of beautiful little silver coffee spoons that's just perfect to get into the nooks and crannies and crevices. But anyway, so next time, if you didn't know that, next time, that's a really good way to peel your ginger. Now, hopefully, your saucepan is now starting to bubble and fizz, and you can hear the onions starting to melt. Give them a little stir every now and then. You want them to be translucent and not to stick to the floor of the saucepan. I'll show you what mine look like now. That's what mine look like. So I've still got plenty of oil in the bottom there. And I'm moving the onion around. And actually, it's very nearly, very nearly the consistency that I want it to be. So the onion's starting to go clear. I don't want them brown. I just want them cooked through. Make sure that all the little bits are pulled off the side of the saucepan and are cooking along the Bottom. You should be able to start to smell really fantastic. One day there'll be smell of vision, won't there? Not quite yet. What's smelling? Smell of vision will be like when I was little. I I never believed that when you made a telephone call to somebody, you might actually be able to see them. I couldn't believe that that would ever be possible. And now look at us. <laughs> hey. We're having, we're having a telephone conversation with the whole world now at the same time. All right? So at the moment, my garden is ginger. 
Not garlic. <laughs> Looks like this. Lovely and smooth and no wastage. All that's left is those tiny little bits of paperiness that you really don't want. And um, there's not much you can do with that, but it means you don't waste lots of the ginger if you if you peel it. Right. A lemon zest. A lemon zest. I think we take that will take too much off as well. So about now, I'd say you could take your um. Take your pot off the heat. Now you don't have to do what I've done. Um, you can just move it to one side and leave the burner going. Um, or if you're working on induction, leave that still on. If you're working on induction, I'd say you probably want to be at about number four um, or gas, a, a kind of gentle to medium flame. So they're just starting to turn a bit golden now. And what we're gonna do next is put in our curry powder and our turmeric is um, going in powder. next. So, I was holding this turmeric powder when it was supposed to be They're both going in at the same time, it doesn't matter. Curry powder, turmeric powder. There you go. Plonk them both in. So you've got two heat tablespoons of mild curry powder and one teaspoon of turmeric powder. In it goes. <laughs> All in? Yeah. No. Do we need to use a teaspoon? Yeah. That sound good? Yeah, and for goodness sakes, any chefs at home, don't put a saucepan on a wooden surface or you get in terrible trouble with your grown up. <laughs> and you see, oh my goodness, that smells amazing. <laughs> So we're just going to put that on the heat again for literally just a minute to warm the spices through again. Do you want to come and stir? Yeah. And then we're effectively going to make a roux. Now a roux is again a very fancy technical chefy term for something that makes a sauce or a liquid um, and you do that by using a flour and fat mixture that you cook out or warm through so that you don't end up with that nasty raw flour. If anyone's ever eaten raw flour before, they know that that's really not very nice at all. But the minute it's cooked, um, you know, bread is basically fundamentally flour and water. Isn't that a delicious thing? But if you ate raw flour and a sip of water, ooh, disgusting. So what we're gonna do next, once you can smell the spices warming through, we're going to now put in our one tablespoon of plain flour. Of course I can. Yeah, it's getting hot and it's bubbling away nicely, isn't it? Should we show them again? Yeah. Do you want to hold that, sweetheart? And I'll just bring the saucepan over again. So that is starting to bubble away really nicely in the bottom. It's getting a bit tricky. And we're going to... We're going to pop in that flour. If you tip the pan slightly so that most of the fat comes to the bottom corner and then pop the flour right into that spot. And then we're going to stir, is it all in? Yeah. You're going to stir the flour until it's really well mixed. And it's going to thicken up quite a bit. It might look a little bit dry. You might start to think, oh, but no, trust us, Wrong. we're fine, okay? So we just, can you see that? It's starting to sort of stick a little bit to the bottom and dry out a little bit. That's the flour expanding and soaking up the moisture of the fat from the vegetable oil that we had at the beginning and any of the moisture that was coming from the ginger and the garlic and the onion. Ah, that's coming in a minute. And then we're just going to pop that on the heat again, just for one more minute. And keep stirring all the time, because what you don't want to do is let it catch on the bottom and burn. Because the trouble with burning something like a sauce is that your whole sauce will taste burnt. So if you're worried about it at all, whip it off the minute you feel that you think it's starting to catch on the bottom. Right. So now that we can see the sauce really bubbling, we know 
Oh, it's all right. It's just the tiniest, tiniest little fairy dust of a pinch. You aren't you worried about it? All right. Is it lonely? It's lonely. I'm left behind. You might have to dig your finger in there, sweetheart. But my paste now, it's more of a paste, is bubbling nicely still, but it's not catching, it's not gone brown, or it's not gone browner than obviously the herbs and spices have made it. And now it's ready for our stock. Now, the trick with this. What did you just put in? Um, he, she just put in the tiniest little bit of flour that got left behind in the bowl. Oh. Don't worry about it, nothing new. So, so far, what we've got in here is our onion, our garlic, our ginger, our oil that we cooked them in, and then we added the turmeric and the curry powders. Everybody with us? We have a thumbs up. Easy. Yeah? I'm cool. With You're with us. Awesome. So now what we're going to do, and actually I think I'm just going to grab a heat pad here just to make sure that we do actually protect the, um, your dad's lovely old chest of drawers, isn't it actually? Is it? Yeah, believe it or not. Hopefully it looks slightly more professional than that on a Zoom, but it is in fact your dad's old chest of drawers works very well in my kitchen. <laughs> We're now going to pour in little bit by little bit by the, way, the stock. If you're having trouble holding this jug mm -hmm. um, and you've got a jug that has a handle like this or something like that, then and it's quite heavy, maybe to have it to help it and it makes it easier, you could. Put your leg, so you have your hand like that and then put it like that and it makes it much easier to pour and hold. Yeah, so whenever you're cooking, always do the way that feels like the most solid, safe, calm way to do things. It's always important when you're cooking that you don't rush um, and you don't panic. We do not like those kitchens where people shout and scream at each other and get very stressed. I don't want one of those. But that's in Gordon Ramsay's kitchen and that's one of the most famous kitchens in the world. Yes, but we don't need to talk about him, do we? Because <laughs> this is our kitchen and we do things our way. <laughs> right, little bit by little bit. So just really a couple of tablespoons and it's going to suddenly get really thick and you're going to stir it and keep stirring it. So if you've got a grown up around, ask, have one person do the stirring and one person do the pouring. And you're just going to go slowly, that's probably enough to start with, and get that so it's sort of thick and then watery bits and lumpy. It's not amalgamated at all yet, but in no time it will thicken up and suddenly, like magic, it's back to a paste again. And when it's got back to a paste that's sort of uniform. Then you can pour some more in. I don't know what I'm doing here. She should just do this on her own. <laughs> it's not easy for everybody though, is it? Yeah. And so, yeah. And sort of a bit watery and go again. Okay, and now we can start to get a little bit braver and get a little bit more of the liquid in. Probably put half of that now. Very good. And just gently, gently stir to get it all back to the same consistency again. Mm? Mm, it is a bit liquidy, but... Can get some paper towel to burn in. Yeah, sure. Um, but don't worry, so it's going to start to look quite liquidy now. And we're going to add, while well, Dr. Zipped off to get some paper towel, I'm going to add the last of the stock in. So that's the last of our 300 millilitres of stock. That's now all gone in. And the only lumps that you should see really are the lumps of the little bits of onion and the bits of garlic. And it should look 
it should feel quite sort of sloppy and liquidy now. Don't panic because it's going to thicken up. Because now we're going to pop it on the heat. And you want it to be a medium low heat. And so the last things that you will have left that you haven't. Sugar and the soy sauce and the coconut oil. Exactly. So we haven't yet used our teaspoon of sugar, which is here, our teaspoon of soy sauce. Now it said on the recipe like soy sauce. That's mostly to make sure that you don't use something like ketchup mayonnaise or a very thick soy sauce, dark soy sauce, which can be very punchy, um, tends to be very sweet, very salty. Um, and you might find that you don't like that flavour and you don't need that flavour. So I've also put to taste. Um, and also if you're trying to reduce your sugar um, and your sodium intake, then that's a really great spot to um, hold back a little bit. So. This sauce now, we're going to let that come up to a simmer and then let it simmer for about 10 minutes. And every now and then just go up and give it a little stir, make sure it's not rolling boil, not bubbling too much. And we'll come back and, and keep an eye on it. And I just put it, I put it there and then you took the other one away. We don't need it. That's fine. It was only to show them how to do it. <laughs> um, so at the end, or towards the end of our sauce making, we're going to add the coconut and the sugar and the soy. In about five minutes or so after it's bubbled for a little while, we're going to add the coconut to the liquid mixture that we've got now. And then right at the end, we'll add the soy and the sugar if we feel that we need it. And so while that's cooking, we're going to go to the fun part. Chicken, chicken. Or tofu, which is actually what she's decided that she wants to do because she doesn't want to do chicken. I don't like ham and chicken, so I'm doing tofu <laughs> for my mother who put it very in. That's right, which is very thoughtful of you. So I'm going to make chicken for you and you're going to make tofu for me. Actually, I'm going to have some tofu. Mm, that's pretty good. So the next bit is making sure that we've got all the things that we need lined up and ready to go. Yes. We're going to need a plate or a low bowl. Actually, not a low bowl because they don't know what a low bowl is. We're going to show they them. They don't live with us. They don't live with us. So I holler things like, get five low bowls. I need three plates. Hurry up. Um, and when I say a low bowl, that's what I'm talking about. So it's kind of like um, a low plate. A low plate, plate with a dip in it. Um, it's actually technically called a soup plate, but if we use that terminology in this house, I think they go up. So we only need one of those one flour, one pan coat, and then one blank one for the egg. I'm going to make her crack the egg, she hates it. <laughs> no. Yes. Come on, you can't go too far wrong, eh? So we're going to put two eggs cracked in the middle one. So you're going to have one with flour, plain flour, one with two eggs, and one with your panko breadcrumbs. Now I can hear my sauce bubbling away over here, so I'm going to give it a little stir, and then I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So if it's really boiling, you don't want that, you just want it to be gently bubbling. And I think I'm probably, it's thickening up nicely. And in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna pop my uh, coconut milk in. Ah, oh, now we also had a tip, didn't we, Doc, for the coconut milk? Because it's quite annoying, this recipe. It's quite hard to find 100 mils of coconut milk. So loads of us went out and got a whole big can of coconut milk. And we were thinking, well, what am I going to do with the rest of the coconut milk? So Dot had some ideas for you so that we don't waste it, didn't you? Can you remember what they were? Well, you can make ice lollies with it with some molds and lollipop sticks. And what you can do is... I'm just getting this piece of egg out. No. Um, what you can do is you can pop it in there, spit up. Um, what you can do is 
put the get some chocolate. <laughs> that would be so funny. Get some chocolate powder and then mix it with the rest of your coconut milk and then add a load of sugar and then taste it to see if it tastes nice. If it's it, and by a load, nice, what she means is just a teeny weeny little bit because you can always add more, can't you? You can't do that. So like maybe a teaspoon max. Yeah, and then you can check if it tastes nice. If it doesn't, then put some more sugar in or put some more chocolate in. Maybe some vanilla. Maybe some vanilla. Yeah, and if you don't have um, if you don't have little uh, popsicles. Another really easy thing to do is to get an ice cube tray and put some tin foil over the ice ice cube tray. Um, after you've filled it, it's in my hand. <laughs> after you've filled the ice cube tray with your mixture of your coconut milk and maybe coconut and mango, coconut and raspberry, coconut and a little bit of orange juice if you've got it, um, and just a tiny bit of sugar. Um, you can pour it into your ice cube trays, put tin foil over it. <laughs> And then poke in um, a lollipop stick or a straw. If you've got a paper straw, you can cut the paper straws and then pop them in through the tin foil and then put them in the freezer and you've got little mini popsicles, which are quite nice when it's good and hot. Now, Doc, before we do the, the breading of the katsu, I'm just going to show them so your sauce should look like that. Like that. Okay, now yours might not be as dark as mine. My curry powder is quite dark, um, but it should be nice and sort of velvety consistency. Approximately the consistency of um, pouring cream or single cream, depending upon where in the world you are. You will probably want dry hands. Yes. So I'm just going to let them know that at this point, I'm going to put my coconut milk. Into the coconut powder. Oh, just in a message. Someone said they made a smoothie with, the, with cocoa and banana. Brilliant. Nice. Really nice. I like that. Yeah, banana and coconut. Great. Anything sort of tropical, right? We're making frappuccinos at home. Yeah, we are. We make frappuccinos. <laughs> And, and we might have maybe added something a little more exciting for the grown-ups. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so I have, just in case anyone's going, what did you put in the saucepan? I missed that. I've just added in our coconut milk. It's a little bit tricky to see. I don't know why the angle of our... Coconut milk. Our coconut milk. Coconut milk. Screen is a little bit funky coconut today. Milk. So there's the coconut milk that's gone into the sauce now, and it just makes it that slightly paler colour. And you should suddenly think, oh, that looks a little bit like the sauce we have on the katsu curry at Wagamama. Well, that's because it's the Wagamama recipe. It's slightly paler. <laughs> exactly the point. Okay. Actually, we didn't use the garlic in one bit. We didn't use the garlic. At oh no, we did. We did. It was in the little bowl. It was already chopped up. Yeah, but you know, one bit of the recipe you said, um, oh, I can already spell my mistake. And you said it was supposed to be garlic, but instead it was supposed to be chicken. What was that? You've forgotten when you were checking the recipe. Oh, yes, no, you're absolutely right. Yes, before the class, we did. We spotted a mistake. Um, thankfully though, not in my recipe, it's in somebody else's, um, but we caught it, didn't we? Because lots of people have taken um, the lovely chef's recipe. It was so kind of him. He has shared with the whole world how to make his amazing wagamama katsu, his signature dish. Um, and it's been duplicated and replicated by lots of people, um, some of whom have um, copied it incorrectly. But anyway, yes, we didn't. So hopefully it should come out perfectly. We did test it, as we always do. Right, katsu. So I've now got my sauce on a very, very, very low flame, just gently, gently bubbling away. And now, immaculately clean hands. If you're not sure that they are, go give them a quick wash. 
and dry them really well. So Doc's absolutely right. The thing you want to really make sure is that they're nice and dry. So Toby's not vegetable. You put it on the vegetable. He, she's absolutely right. I've got fancy colour coordinated boards, which aren't necessary, but you do want to keep your raw chicken away from everything else. And because we're going to do tofu and chicken, we're going to do our tofu first and then our chicken. Um, and she's absolutely right. So I put the tofu, it, it technically is a vegetable, by the way. Tofu is made from what? But then you, where do you put the tofu in the meat bit of the fridge? Oh, you're absolutely right, in the packets. That's because they're sealed packets and they're in the most chilled section and that is the correct place to put them. Mm -hmm. And so tofu is made from soya beans. It's actually got a kind of a funky name. It's actually technically called soya bean curd. Anybody knew that? Doesn't sound quite so appetizing, does it? Now I'm gonna cut that in half. Cut it in half. Lengthways, because... Go away from teeth. Yeah, you can see the seam. So it's actually made in quite a similar way to cheese. They separate the curds from the wateriness of the um, of the beans. So it's really beautiful to watch. Actually, you can find out on YouTube um, and watch videos on how they make soya bean curd. Where Dorothy was born in Singapore, um, I don't know whether you remember this, but we used to go and get fresh soya bean um, curd, really, really, really light milk, almost like a jelly. Um, it's absolutely delicious and then they pour sugar syrup and all sorts of fabulous things on it. So I've just cut that in half. It's not completely in half. It's, I, I've done that really badly. Look how bad. Oh my gosh, it's supposed to be a chef. That's terrible. Um, but just so that you get a nice um, proportion of crusty, crispy loveliness. Um, to the, the tofu. The other thing that we've done is patted it dry. So if you're using tofu or if you're using chicken, either pat it dry. So you want dry hands and dry chicken. Yeah? I'm going to do the same now with my chicken. And now I've used this knife for vegetables. I wouldn't ever use it to cut a piece of chicken and then cut something else. But because I've used it to cut a piece of tofu, I'm going to use the same knife to cut my chicken. And again, if you think that you've got a really big fat breast, like we do, lovely nice fat breast, I'm going to cut that in half horizontally so that I've got two thinner pieces, which then means that if you've got two breasts, each person will get two pieces of katsu. So the next thing that I'm going to do just over here is turn on my oil as well and so if you've got a grown-up around that also might be something nice to ask them to do for you to just and again chicken breast is uneven shape to start with so i don't know whether you can see that i'm just very carefully cutting horizontally straight through the middle of the breast so that i've got two similar sized pieces we're going to do a knife skills class soon, everybody. Look, it looks like angel wings, doesn't it? That's nice. And then I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to put my knife away. So, it smells sour. It smells sour, the chicken breast, does it? No. Sometimes chicken does smell. Um, sometimes chicken does give off a little bit of a, a smell, fresh chicken. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. But sometimes, especially when it comes in packaging, um, that it's been sat in for a little while, it can sometimes smell um, a little bit farmy, doesn't it? Good. Now, my sauce, I'm just going to quickly check back on our sauce. My sauce is now a lovely creamy colour and quite nice and thick. It's this sort of consistency back again, even though that I've added my coconut milk. The consistency is again um, like a sort of single cream or pouring cream, kind of light paint. Um, and that's the consistency that I'm after. I want it to be just a tiny bit thicker than that. So I turn the heat right down. I'm just going to let it keep going. And then my oil now is starting to heat up it's so that it's ready. It did sound like a bing bong, but I don't think so. Um, 
my oil is on a low heat, just starting to heat up to get ready so that when I'm ready with my katsu and it's all breaded and ready to be cooked, I'm ready to do it. And anyone who's on here who doesn't have a grown up around, they make sure that their grown up is nearby because we are going to be frying with hot oil. Now in my saucepan that I've got, I've got a quite high sided frying pan and I've put about 100 mils of oil. The recipe actually says 75, but you might find that you need a bit more. Um, so I put in 100 mils of, of oil. You want the oil to be just over the thickness of your thumb, or just over the thickness, almost the thickness of whatever it is that you're cooking. So we're not deep frying it, but we're sort of half deep frying it. Now, <coughs> We're frying it. We're not shallow frying it. We're not deep frying it. We're sort of somewhere in between. Um, right, flour. Should you mix the eggs together? 100%. Flour, eggs, panko. You beat me to it. I was about to say, now what do we need to do to those eggs? It's really important. Here's a fork. That's the best thing to use. Mm -hmm. And then I tell you something. You did make a good point, Josh. You said that this wasn't our recipe and we, we haven't changed it at all. I do have a humble suggestion, which is that right now, this mixture that we're going to put on the outside of our chicken or our tofu, it doesn't actually have any seasoning at all. If you want to, there is nothing at all that says that you can't make this your own. And if you wanted to add a little bit of salt and pepper to your flour, that would be a, a, a great moment to do it. Some people add seasoning to the panko breadcrumbs, but actually I find it falls off quite quickly. Whereas if you add seasoning to your flour, it will turn into a sort of wallpaper pasty glue that holds the breadcrumbs at the end, and that's where your seasoning will stay. Um, so I'm going to put a little pinch of salt into our flour. Is that okay with you? Sure. Yeah? Do you want a little bit of pepper in there as well? No. No? Mm -hmm. Um, so when your eggs start to get like all mixed together, when the yolk is all mixed and there's lots of bubbles, you can't really see it from here, but it's really oh, yeah, got a big shot on there, bubbles. You can't really see the bubbles. No, that's true. It's nice and frothy. Yeah. Um, that's the consistency that you're going for. Do you want to take a clean dry fork and mix that salt through as well, sweetheart? Sure. Yeah. And then, because this would be really boring to watch us cook two or even four pieces of um, chicken and tofu for the rest of our family, we're not going to do that. We're just going to do one for you so that you can see the end result. And if you like, you can turn off your heat and just watch us do that so that then when you need to do yours, because maybe you're not actually going to cook yours until a little bit later, maybe you want to do supper a little bit later, that's fine. So you can go ahead and keep breading your chicken um, or breading your tofu and then watch us cook this one just so that you can see the end result. And then we'll say goodbye at the end and you can carry on and, and cook it. And then please send us photos of what it looks like because we love seeing everybody's efforts, don't we? The best raking. bit. Huh? Raking. You're raking. She's raking the flour. Right. Let's make sure that we're not burning our sauce. That's coming along beautifully. You must be boring. Mm. We're ready. We're ready. boring then. Oh, you're absolutely right. We're going to do tofu first. Okay, so two hands. Big chefy tip coming up. When you bread something, dry hands, flour first, egg second, breadcrumbs last. Always. Don't believe anyone who tells you any different. Flour first, and you want the whole thing to be coated in flour. Any bit that doesn't have flour on it means the egg won't glue to it, which means the breadcrumbs won't stick, which means you'll get bald patches. No one likes bald patches. Another good chef tip. You may need two hands. You may need two hands. Right, go. Show me yes, how it's done. If you only have one hand, that's not good. You might want to use this hand for the flouring and the egg, because it'll get really good. And this hand to then work with the breadcrumbs. And I'll show you a little trick with the breadcrumbs. 
So you want to really move it around in the flower, make sure that you've got flower over all four sides um, of it, and then shake the flower, the excess flower off into your flower, flower bowl before you put it in the um, egg. Good, so good. Good. Make sure that it's it's really it's really cool when like you try and hide almost hide the thing that you're trying to do and then take it out and then all the flower will be on your thing. That's right. Yeah, you sort of hide it. So have you shaken off the excess flower in there. Yes. Yeah, a nice click, and then gently lower it into the. Yeah, try not to sort of slap it, or you'll get egg everywhere. No, that's not good. No, that's not good. Because then you'll get on the tooth, and then that will go into the flower, and that will. And just get comfortable with the fact that one of your hands is going to get really sticky, Nicky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So dots found that there's a little patch actually where the egg runs away from the flower. Don't it? Just give it a little smoosh around. Make sure that you've got egg so that it's made like a glue all over. Yeah, and you see that bit where the egg's almost sort of running away from the flower because the flower's really dry. Feel good? And then what she's going to do is lift it with her wet hand, shake off the excess, wriggle off the excess egg, and then gently plonk it in the middle of the breadcrumbs. And then do exactly what you did with the flour and try and... And use your dry hand to pull the breadcrumbs from around the edge onto it. And if you get a nice pile of breadcrumbs in your hand, you can put it on the top of the wet bit and sort of use it to push, push your piece of protein, your tofu or your chicken, down into those breadcrumbs. Yeah, great job. You want to make sure that you've got breadcrumbs stuck to. So I didn't mean to take over. <laughs> so that's my first piece of tofu done. Tofu katsu done. First piece of tofu katsu done. Actually, not completely done. No? What's missing? It needs to be cooked. Right. <laughs> Very good point. Okay. So that, that looks great. So if you want to at that point, you can just pick it up and scrunch it on the sides as well. Oh, I thought we were going to do chicken next. Um, so, well, you can do that, that's fine. And I'm going to put this straight into my oil. Now, don't panic. If you're not ready to do that, don't worry. I'm just going to do it so that you can see what the end result is. Is, um, and how you want it to look um, and you can do this after we've said goodbye and do it calmly and, and um, without any rush okay but I'm now going to gently lower my tofu into my oil which is currently on a sort of medium heat and it's going to fizz and sizzle Yay. and before I did that I don't know if anybody noticed, but I've got a lovely plate here with some paper towel that Doc taught me earlier. Woo, that cooked so quickly. So my heat is on probably almost too hot for tofu. I've got it on a big, big heat. So that's gone very dark very quickly, but gosh, it's going to be tasty. So I flipped it over, that barely took a minute. Chicken will take longer because you want to make sure it's cooked all the way through. So you're going to want to make sure that your temperature is a little bit lower. Oh, wow. Oh, how are you getting on there? Good. Yeah? And then I've made sure that my paper towel is nowhere near my flame, but I've made sure that I've got a plate with some paper towel ready to receive my tattoo so that it can drain off nicely. Woohoohoo! Now, are you ready with your next one, do you think? I'm going to turn that, I'm actually going to turn that off for now. Um, you getting there? 
And you wanted me to do the chicken, didn't you? Yeah. I'm doing it with the opposite hand. So I'm covering my chicken now with flour. We've also been really good and we've reused our oil. So um, there might be a couple of little bits of, of breadcrumbs in that oil from last time that maybe made it go a little bit darker. But that's fine. What we'll do. How are you getting on? Oh, this is lovely and sticky and gooey. I think it's going to get really good and stuck. Yeah, looking good. How's everybody doing out there? In there. In there, in there out there? Is that inside? Is that inside? They are, we're all inside. We should be outside, really, shouldn't we? We've got a lovely select few today because I think most people are outside enjoying the sunshine and half term. Well, they're not if you're in New York because you've just had Memorial Day weekend. And everyone is back to school today, I think. Okay, ready for the next one? Or do you want to cook that one later? Cook that one later. Yeah. Maybe. So you could pop that back on the green, the green one, that's fine. I'm going to go wash my hands, you so do don't that. get worried if I just... And nobody worry. Don't panic. <laughs> She's not abandoning me yet. Although she might like you. Oh, Dot had a joke, didn't he? He had not a joke, a riddle. Oh, yes. Um, Can you answer? Yes. So the riddle is see if you can get this. What cheese is made? Back to front. Make backwards. Backwards. What cheese is made backwards? Back to front is too easy. You think back to front is too easy? Do you think back to front gives them okay. too much of a clue? Okay, does that one look good? Does that one look ready to go in? Yeah. All, right. All right, so I'm going to put this in and then will you move those bowls out of the way, sweetheart? And then we can show them the finished results. So, I'm going to wash my hands quickly here too. At the end, we will tell you the answer to that riddle. And don't worry because the end is so many. <laughs> this was kind of a complicated one. We had lots of things to measure out, didn't we? I hope everybody had fun measuring them out. Yes. Okay. There was a little bit of confusion. You had fun, didn't you? There was a little bit of confusion because um, the original recipe that I literally just copied out. Um, calls for the um, katsu curry sauce with katsu and somebody said, oh, does that mean I have to make the sauce before class as well? Um, and no, of course not. Otherwise you'd just be watching me make katsu, which wouldn't be exciting at all, would it, God? So, also guys, yeah, that's so annoying that we can't see. Will you just push the screen down a little bit, darling, so people can see? There we go. Don't bring the computer bit no, more. it's fine, John. Is that the trophy or the chicken? That is the chicken. So we've done the tofu. Oh, and that's the chicken. Yeah. It's a bit burnt. It's not burnt, but it is definitely darker than we would usually have it. Yeah. So there you go. And we're just gently moving it around in the hot oil. Perfect. Gently moving it around in the hot oil to make sure that it is cooked all the way through. Yeah, so if we had it that hot for the chicken dog, it wouldn't have been okay because the chicken wouldn't have cooked all the way through. It would have gone so black on the outside that it wouldn't have cooked the chicken on the inside and that would have been no good at all. But the tofu is going to be great. I don't mind it being a bit dark. Now, for the grand finale. Fancy Asian plays. It's actually just a piece of old cheese board slate, but. That reminds me of the riddle. Does, any, does anyone have any suggestions? 
Oh, Any idea what it I is? Did. Well, Dot looks like fantastic. And don't get fooled by saying cheese backwards, just saying cheese backwards. Yeah, it's backwards. not cheese backwards. Because that, that would just be an easy, peasy, lemon squeezy riddle. <laughs> it wouldn't even be a riddle. It would just be saying, can you say cheese back to the front, which wouldn't be very fun. That wouldn't be a riddle. It wouldn't tease your mind. It wouldn't tease your mind. No, it wouldn't tease your mind. So, what's the answer? What is cheese that's made backwards? Tell them. Edam. Edam. Get it? Cheese that's made backwards. Edam made. Made. It's terrible. They got it from a riddle book that my dad downloaded. <laughs> okay, so we've taken out our chicken. Now it's time to finish our sauce. So our sauce now is looking it's pretty good. Got a skin on the top. Yeah, it does have a little skin on the top, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, now we will sieve it through. Now you don't have to. So the chef at work, Mama. Yeah, he does. He sips it so that you end up with a lovely smooth sauce. But if you don't mind the lumps of onion and ginger and garlic in it, that's totally fine. Um, and again, you might want to grab a grown-up and have one person pour and one person hold on to the bits. And just do it very slowly and carefully. Can you see how lovely and thick that is? What if it jumps onto your hand? Well, you can tell your mother off because she's the one who's in charge. I mean, you usually do anyway, don't you? If it goes wrong. If it goes wrong, it's my fault. If it goes okay, it's yours. Can you see the, the, to the sauce? Sorry, see some. Did you add the soy sauce and the sugar to the sauce? So what we're going to do is strain it and then taste it. And then you're going to decide if you want to add the sugar in the soy sauce or not. Okay. Yeah. And I don't think I've got my fancy ladle, but if you've got a small ladle, if you're ever trying to push something through a sieve, the quickest way to do that is using the back of a ladle. It works like magic and pushes everything through, through the sieve. But right now, I'm just going to use my wooden spoon just to get most of it through the holes and leave a kind of thick paste behind. That's perfect. Yeah, I wouldn't throw it away, but it's delicious. But I tell you what, maybe we have... Maybe you could make it, like if you are doing Mexican some night soon, you could use it and put it into a wrap or something. Or maybe if you oh, had the cheese. Jack Whitehall thing and um, you, if you've had the Jack Whitehall burgers that they're delivering and you are vegetarian, you can't have the bacon jack. Which are incredible. If anybody isn't following Food Slut, um, go ahead and, and find Jack Whitehall's latest project. So he's creating burgers and burger kits that are going out nationally now. Um, with 50% of all of their proceeds are, are going, in fact, 50% of the entire cost of the kit and um, by the way, is going to the Felix Project, which, as you know, we all have a bit of a thing about, don't we? And by the way, don't think that Jack Whitehall's <laughs> like a chef for a really famous chef and that you're missing out on tons. He's not a famous chef. He's actually just a comedian who's quite good at cooking. But he's a completely lovely man and he also has a bit of a thing about um, the Felix Project too, doesn't he? And he's been helping out down there with food parcels and deliveries and stuff, which is great. And then wanted to come up with a special way of um, raising even more money. And so he's, he's been cooking like crazy at home, hasn't he? He made this... Do you want to taste this, Dot, and bacon. see what you think? And then he's made this like bacon, bacon sauce. And trust me, it sounds disgusting. Bacon box, no. Bacon jam it was. Oh, it was bacon and, jam. And Come around to I, it. I, I, I thought it was, uh, it, it sounded disgusting. Bacon jam. That's actually amazing. So anyone who's American will know a little 
little bit about that. Okay, don't, don't burn your tongue. It's not hot. But it's not good. I think maybe a bit of sugar. A little bit of sugar. You're in charge. Okay, so then this is what I meant. So add a little bit of sugar, a little bit of the soy, until it tastes the way you want it to taste. How are you going on? Good. And then I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you how the plate up. This, he'd be so embarrassed. This is Joshua's first bowl that he ever made. <laughs> but it's the perfect shape for rice. We're going to put a tiny little bit of oil. So the only thing that you needed to cook the four glass today was your rice. So if you haven't done it, don't panic. But go and tell your grown-up that you need rice, please. We're going to smear a tiny little bit, just a little bit of oil around a bowl. Then, again, so I've just washed my hands so I know they're pretty clean. We're going to lift some rice into the bowl and squash it down so that we make a lovely dome shape. And I've used sushi rice for my rice just because it's Doc's favourite. And it felt right, sort of sushi style rice, sticky rice, feels like the right thing to have with Katsu. I, I was saying about the bacon jam. Oh yeah, it sorry. Sounds, it sounds truly disgusting, but it's delicious. But if you're vegetarian and you can't have it, I'm probably, that leftover stuff will be exactly like a big It'll be very jam. similar. So that the, the onion, ginger, and garlic mixture with the curry spices would be amazing in a sandwich. You're absolutely right. That's a brilliant idea. So you could smear it in a wrap um, and maybe add some chicken, or maybe tomorrow if you've got leftover katsu, you could have a katsu chicken sandwich wrap and instead of having the sloppier sauce you could have that smeared over the inside because it's a little bit drier um actually it would be delicious with a piece of cheddar as well that curried curried mixture right nearly there now we've got our rice that's all packed down now's where where everyone has to hold their breath is it going to? It's not going to come out. It has to. <gasps> it has to. The oil is going to Oh, oh. Okay, can you cross your fingers, please? I just need to see. Is it right on? Ta da! There's your fancy domed rice, just like they do it in the restaurant. And then last of all, we're going to take our chicken <laughs> and pop it on the side and we'll cut it. So it looks really nice and fancy. Yeah, really nice and fancy. So what we'll do, it might be easier to do this on a chopping board, but we've run out of a little bit of space here, haven't we? So I'm going to cut it at a slight angle, which is called an oblique cut. Oh, wow. That's so good. I pulled all of the sugar in. And oh, did you think it needed all of the sugar in the end? It might do. There you go. Uh, well, that pitch. looks pretty pro to me. Made to perfection. <laughs> what do we think? Pretty good. And then all we need to do now is pour the score on a little bit of sauce. Now, Dot, you're going to taste it. Check it out. 
<laughs> so the presenter can stand here and you can lift it up, everyone can bum. see. Bum. 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 It sounds like the beginning of a movie. That does. Actually, it's really tricky to lift, isn't it? Yeah. Ta da! Bring it closer. <laughs> There we go. Glory. Wagga mama, chicken katsu. Pretty good, huh? Yum, 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 yum. Oh, thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Um, now, we had one last thing that I wanted to do. Um, lots and lots and lots of people have asked how they could say thank you to Dot um, for all of her cooking classes. and. Um, I know that loads of you have made amazing donations every single week um, for Felix Project and Repertorio Felix and Cook 19, which are projects very, very dear to our heart. But there's a little something, Dot, you don't know this, but there's a little something that everybody joined up to do. And there's something that's going to arrive in a while. You won't be able to have that for about 10 weeks. But while we, and they all know what that is, but it's a surprise, we're not going to tell you yet, okay? So when that arrives, we'll show everybody. But there is a little something that we wanted to give you to say thank you for all your hard work. Can you give me a minute and I'll go and grab it? Do any of you know about this one? Daddy wrapped this, so it's really bad wrapping. No. <laughs> is it? Is it all right? Shall I get the chicken cutter out of the way? That's not so bad, is it? <laughs> you need a bigger size. That's not so bad. We don't know what it is, darling. It might be a rubbish present. But this is a present from everybody that has been coming to your cooking classes for all of the months. Of lockdown. But then it can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. <laughs> no, it's pretty good. And this is only part of it. So they wanted to give you something that you could use for your cooking. Um, and then later we're going to give you something else that um, is going to take a little while to make. But it's somebody very, very special making you something. Oh, I'll just rip it open, lady. Very nice recipe. Ooh. What do you think? Shall I see if you can see everybody? Red yeah. bell. Mm. Yes. <laughs> what is it, Charles? Oh. It's a handhold mixer. So it's like a big 